In this video, I'm going to rank the studio albums by Faith No More. They are a band that I have been listening to for a long time now. They have seven studio albums, and I will rank them from worst to best. So this ranking is just my opinion and will be in the order from my least favorite to my most favorite. So let me just jump right into this. At number seven, I have Soul Invictus from 2015. This was their album after a long hiatus. This one is not that bad. I just feel that it is the least memorable of all the albums. The sound is pretty straightforward. They have elements of all the previous albums on this one. I just felt a little bored with this, but there is some good stuff. For example, the song Superhero is pretty cool. It has a thick bass sound and they mix in a lot of different keyboard sounds. Mike Patton uses different vocal styles on this one. And uh, there's some stuff that's more laid back where Mike Patton sings in like this baritone style, such as a song like Cone of Shame. And that one has this like spaghetti Western feel. They also do some different stuff with a song like Rise of the Fall. This one has a reggae beat mixed with an 80s post-punk sound. The song Matador it reminded me of like old Alice Cooper with that like haunting piano and those soft uh, spoken vocals. And the final song, uh, From the Dead, had more of a classic rock sound with strummed acoustic guitars and pop style choruses. This album is not bad, it's just the most laid back album of their discography. At number six, I have We Care A Lot from 1985. This was their debut album. This was uh, one of the two albums with Chuck Mosby on uh, vocals, along with uh, other members of the band. Now this one is not too bad. It has a very uh, raw production value and uh, Chuck Mosby is a very good vocalist, but very different from uh, Mike Patton. The album is an example of uh, the band trying to find their sound and there's some good stuff here. It has one of my favorite songs called uh, We Care A Lot and will also appear on uh, that next album with the updated lyrics. This can also be considered an early version of like rap and metal. And there's a song uh, like The Jungle. That one has some heavy riffs mixed with some new wave keyboards. There's a song called uh, Why Do You Bother? This one sounds a lot like uh, the post-punk bands of the early mid 80s with the extended bass riff. But this song still has that signature Faith No More sound with the distorted guitars and keyboard textures. Then there is As the Worm Turns, which, which was actually re-recorded later with uh, Mike Patton. That was an extra track on the Angel Dust album. This is classic Faith No More with a heavy keyboard sound and some metal guitar riffs. It's a very good album, but the others are much better. At number five, I have Album of the Year. This one was released in 1997. This was their uh, last album of the 90s before taking a long break. This one is uh, very good. They continue with their signature sound, just like they did on their previous album, King for a Day, Fool for a Lifetime. The album opener, Collision, has a sound that's more like closer to like the Angel Dust album, and it's a very big sound and has those soft and hard vocals by Mike Patton. Strip Search, that's a song with more of like an atmospheric feel, and they do some of those like New Age uh, style keyboards that sounds. And this one brings back some of their like post-punk roots. Last Cup of Sorrow is a classic Faith No More and it just has a sound similar to the Angel Dust album with a lot going on in the song composition. Then there's uh, Naked in Front of the Computer, which has a very raw punk rock sound with some heavier riffs mixed in. This one is kind of like a, a heavier Red Hot Chili Pepper song and that was the vibe that it gave me. Another song, Ashes to Ashes, another one with that Angel Dust sound. On this one, Mike Patton does those like a melodic and baritone style vocals and there are some heavy and melodic riffs in this one. And on this album, Jim Martin was no longer in the band. He was replaced by John Hudson. It's a good album, but it is not album of the year. So at number four is King for a Day, Fool for a Lifetime. This one was released in 1995. This is the first album without guitarist Jim Martin. It's a great album and every album after this is very good. On this album, they took what they did on Angel Dust with that big epic sound and they mixed it more with that like straightforward sound from the real thing. So we get a lot of variety on this album, but also sounds very cohesive as an album as well. The album has some heavy stuff. It has some jazzy stuff. It has uh, some of their modern rock style songs. The opening track, Get Out, uh, starts with a hard driving drum beat. And on this song, uh, Mike Patton does a lot of different vocal styles. 
The song has some heavy riffs by Jim Martin. Ricochet starts out with some heavy guitar chords. That, the chords remind me of like Rage Against the Machine a little bit, but this is a song that has many different like heavy and light parts. And I really like, like the uh, chorus. It's like, uh, it's always funny till someone gets hurt. Then it's just hilarious. <laughs> I always thought that's a funny line. Then there's uh, Evidence. That's a funky song. I kind of discovered they did like a version of this in Spanish as well. You can uh, find that on YouTube. And then this song's pretty cool. It's like a very uh, funky and jazzy style. But then uh, one of my favorite Faith No More songs ever. It's called uh, The Gentle Art of Making Enemies. This is probably their heaviest song or one of them. It has a guitar riff that can come out like, sounds like maybe like a thrash metal band. Mike Patton does a lot of different vocal styles in this song. One of my other favorite songs is uh, Digging the Grave. This one has like a punk rock and metal sound with chugging guitars similar to maybe a song like From Out of Nowhere from The Real Thing. And this one has some heavy riffs. Then another song, I Take This Bottle. That one is more of those like spaghetti western type of songs with uh, Mike Patton doing the lower register vocals. This one would sound something like that could have been on the Angel Dust album as well. It's a great album and that's why I have it at number four. At number three, I have Introduce Yourself. So this might be a surprise that I have this up at very high. But I do have a lot of memories with this album. I bought this right after buying The Real Thing back in the day. This was the last album with Chuck Mosley. And on this album, um, it's just really raw and I used to listen to it all the time. I think it was a big improvement over the last album and they even include the song We Care A Lot with some updated lyrics. So I think like the new version says like, um, you know, we care a lot about Transformers cause they're more than meets the eye. Then the original song is they're like talking about, about the Smurfs and Mr. T and Madonna and something like that. But the rest of the album is very good. Then another song, the album um, starts off with uh, Faster Disco. This one has a chugging guitars and keyboard textures. And then heavy like slap bass sound. Then there's Anne's song. This one has that cool like Red Hot Chili Pepper style bass guitar and some keyboards in the background. They do some more uh, straightforward stuff like the title track. Has that signature sound mixing heavy metal riffs and modern rock keyboards. They got Chinese arithmetic. This one has more of a modern rock sound with a slow building intro and some post-punk style guitar riffs. And one of my favorites is the Crab Song. This is a ballad, it's, and it starts out with uh, Chuck Mosley telling his girlfriend that he's like, oh, she, oh, you look beautiful today. And then he says, oh, get out, stay out of here. And then he leaves, and then actually she leaves, and then you know he's all sad. He's like, oh, come back, I didn't mean it. And the song is just basically just him like, expressing like how sad he was because his girl left him and i used to always like listen to this one and you know one of those songs i always like remember the lyrics so it's a really good song and this album is just very underrated it just has all the elements that like made an album like the real thing a great album so at number two is angel dust and at this point you pretty much know what number one is but between this one and the real thing they were very close so I actually did a whole video on these two albums recently, and you could find it on my channel. There are a lot of great songs here, but one of my favorites is Midlife Crisis. That was the first single. This one has a cool drum beat, and it mixes some heavy riffs and the keyboard sounds. Smaller and Smaller is a great song with some heavy riffs and cool keyboards. And I really like the Middle Eastern sounds in that song. Then there's some heavy stuff like uh, Malpractice. Mike Patton has some uh, heavy vocals on this, and the song has lots of like twists and turns. Then there's just some like that jazzier like lounge singer stuff with a song like A Small Victory and that has some cool guitar melodies and there's some stuff that's very experimental and hard to describe, a song like Jizz Lobber, but overall a very great album. So obviously uh, you know what number one is, it's The Real Thing from 1989. This was the album that got me into the band back when uh, Epic was like on the radio a lot. And, and Epic was um, kind of influential because it kind of like was one of the first like rap metal songs that was like a real big radio hit but there's a lot of great stuff here so the song uh, from out of nowhere has some great guitar rhythms then they have songs uh which are more like keyboard heavy like full into pieces and then um, some have cool vocals with um you know mike patton does a lot of vocal styles in this one one of my favorite songs uh surprise you're dead 
This is the band doing thrash metal. Then there's Zombie Eaters, which is more atmospheric and some nice soundscapes. Some stuff is more commercial sounding, like Underwater Love, more of like a happy, upbeat tone. The song Morning After has some funky bass lines. That's pretty cool. There's an instrumental called Woodpecker from Mars, which has pretty cool like Middle Eastern sounds. And they have the cover of War Pigs by Black Sabbath. Now the last song, uh, it's a very jazzy song called Edge of the World. That one, uh, I, you know, I could take it or leave it because it is kind of like creepy when you listen to it. But otherwise, this is just a solid album and this is the album that got me into the band. So that is all. Uh, tell me what you thought in the comments section. What is your ranking of the Faith No More albums? And uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I will be back again with another video.